fans, do you want to win your share of $100,000? Simply enter the houseofboxing.com fight night prediction challenge. Compete with boxing fans around the world. Simply head over to houseofboxing.com and sign up now. This is Charlie Parsons for Boxing Social and Association with houseofboxing.com and Empire Fight Store. We're slightly tucked in and snug for room. We've got Joe Cordina, the world champ behind us. Frank, how are we, mate? I'm good, mate. I'm good. What's going on with you? Are you enjoying yourself in Monte Carlo? Well, I've been here about 10 minutes. Yeah. Um, obviously, certain outfit problem, which we're not going to talk about. Um, but yes, ready. I feel very broke out here. Even the rain was calling me poor. Um, what a place. Amazing place. This is where you will come in many years when you make your hundreds of millions and you'll be living in one of the beautiful beautiful uh, apartments overlooking the water um, and you'll be in the casino every weekend you know and uh, losing losing all your money um, but great place and it's good to have you here Parsons although you did not dress up in your hoodie tracksuit track pants and Nike Air Force Sevens. Nike Air Force Sevens yes. right I will explain just for the viewership and, and you know I'm, I'm not usually one for smart get-ups however Monaco I was going to change that a lovely knitted number in the uh, in the suitcase with a nice pair of linen trousers. Unfortunately, the weather's not really the weather's not really giving linen trousers. Lucky though, we're indoor. Mate. Yeah, exactly. Linen trousers would not be working in here, mate. Well, there's no rain in here, is there? No, but it's a beautiful room, isn't it? It's probably one of the most beautiful rooms we've ever done a press conference in. I was thinking that. I mean, look at those pillars. I mean, look at that. I mean, look at the gold. I don't think I can. No, don't worry about it. Just stay here. But I'll explain. The gold. The 18 karat painted gold up there. It's not, is it? It's on the ceiling. On the ceiling. This place is ridiculous. Well, I've just made up the 18 karat bit, but okay. Look, be surprised that looks good. Yeah. Anyway, let's talk about some serious stuff. Let's talk about some serious stuff. Joe Cordina and Edward Vasquez. Um, Vasquez talking quite a game. I was very surprised when I was packing yesterday, getting ready to go, and I was seeing Vasquez swearing, calling Joe Cordina arrogant and stuff like that. But quite exciting. We like a bit of build-up like that on fight week. I think it's what you need. You need something that actually gets you, you, get you going in a fight. And that chat is all part of it. Um, so, and it builds something up as well for, the, for people to actually follow. You know, you don't want someone sitting there like, like me or you, you know, this. Um, you, need, you need to, to build up some, a bit of, bit of a emotion and feeling between the two of them. So, and that's exactly what Cordina needs. Let's talk a little bit about sort of the ramifications of this fight. We saw Oshaki Foster last week, although I did just speak to Tony Sims. I'm not massively interested in that Oshaki Foster fight, rather someone like Navarrete instead. Uh, still, we expect Oshaki Foster to work with Matchroom. Ideally, is that the fight that you make after this one? Look, I think the, the focus has got to be unification fights, big fights. Um, and for sure, that is definitely one fight we're looking at. You know, we'll, all eyes set on Saturday night, though, for Joe. He doesn't look past any opponent. You know, he's got a, he's got a test in there on Saturday night. Um, but beyond that, it's definitely one of the fights we're looking at. You know, Navarrete's another big fight, but I think the uh, anything that we can get him, you know, he wants the big fights, and that's what we need to focus on delivering for him. Talk a little bit about the card. A very multicultural, lots of different languages, flags up here. Um, talk to me about this Notchinger. Is that how I say his name? The uh, the light flyweight IBF champion. You guys seem to love him, and he's landed himself on a cheeky little Monaco card. He's in a real fight. I'm being told. Apparently, he's bloody exciting as well. Sivi Nonsenshinga is probably the most exciting, one of the most exciting fighters I've ever seen live. Uh, he did his fight for the IBF when he won the world title in Mexico. And I remember our guy, the guys in our office, Kevin and Sean, were like, we've got to put this fight on, we've got to put this fight on. And we, weren't, we didn't have any either of them signed. And I was like, we haven't really got the space, like went on back and forward. And in the end, we went, all right, let's do it. It was one of the best fights I've ever seen live. And you know me, I'm not like a crazy boxer. Like, I sat there, it was 12 rounds of an absolute terror. And apparently, because the, the people who represent they represented the opponent in that last fight it, back in Mexico, represent this opponent, they say it's going to be even more of a terror. So we're in for a big fight. Um, he's, a, he's a lovely kid as well and, you know, glad to see, you know, it's great to give him massive opportunities. He's boxed, like I say, in Mexico, he boxed back in South Africa on a homecoming fight in his last one and now he's here in Monaco. So, you know, 
it's all about delivering entertaining fights and obviously we're led by as well the government as to what territories we want to focus on you know in terms of from a tourism perspective you know that's why we've got fighters from all over the world and it's uh, it's great to see Sissoko on the card not too far from home for him and then the rematch that anyone who was in New Orleans is absolutely dying to see Ramla Ali versus Guzman two they go at it again Guzman by the way gone up to Ramla, stuck her fist in her face. I, I mean, a bit mad. Yeah, look, well, firstly, look, Sully Sizoko, very amazingly talented fighter. You know, he's got, after this, the aim has got to be world title fights in 2024, and that's what we're focused on delivering, delivering for him. But good to have him in Monaco just down the road. But he's in, again, he's in for a, a real fight here. But like you say, Ramla Ali going straight back into the fire, straight back into that rematch against Guzman. We all, as you say, were there in New Orleans that night. Spectacular fight to watch. Um, and as Ramler said today, it's all part of being a fighter. You know, that element of having a tear up is part and parcel of it. And you've got to respect her for going straight back in there because, you know, Guzman showed how tough she was, but Ramler, Ramler didn't shy away. She went straight back in there for the rematch. And I think we're in for some proper tear ups on the card, and that's what we want. You know, it's going to be a, it's a small arena in there. You've never been, obviously. The last show we did was four years ago. It's a different atmosphere and different sort of set up to what we're used to in a you know, 10,000 seat venue, you've got 300 people in there and the atmosphere is going to be different but people want to be in there close up and they want to watch tear ups and that's what we got Saturday night. On the topic of Monaco I want to give a big shout out to Clements and Church, obviously very close to home for you. Uh, your, your best friend Ian is, is the master tailor there I believe. I was served by Billy, an absolute G, I've got to give him the, the props on the record. I, I, I couldn't believe it when I put it on. I went, oh my God, I didn't know I was capable of it, mate. Little cheeky bow tie number. Little cheeky bow tie number, yeah. You look, Clements and Church, they're the ones. Uh, my mate Ropers, he's, he's created some tremendous outfits for me in the past. I've actually, probably one of his best models. I know I don't look it, but I've actually signed him up to some huge names off the back of my outfits. Um, but he is the visionary, and I, and no, no, no. no. I didn't even know you, you text me. He's the visionary and I'm just the, you know, I'm, I'm the mannequin. The mannequin. You like that? I like that, Frank. Um, humble as always. Right, let's talk about what happened at the weekend. You weren't there in Cancun. I couldn't get your reaction. I'm expecting a fiery one. I don't know how many interviews you've done, but Tyson Fury with a split decision win over Francis Ngannou. That sentence I can't believe I'm saying. Um, a couple of days on now, we've had a lot of time to reflect. I suppose in boxing, we keep going on with the travelling circus that it is, but mental scenes that unfold. Yeah, firstly though, I miss Mexico. I wasn't there, as you say, in Cancun. That fight between Ashaki Foster and Rocky Hernandez, that round, unbelievable. Um, and a great show as well, you know, uh, Justice Hooney as well stepping in against Andrew Tabiti, you know, experienced fighter, great performance from him. Uh, Sugar Nunes as well, he's now going to fight Rakamov. So I'm sad I missed that. But Go I on, Sham. Thanks, mate. I do remember everything. Sad I missed that, but I was at home, I had some stuff to do. First show I've missed in a while. Um, and I did watch Tyson Fury and Francis Ngannou. Firstly, spectacular production, like the event, the setup, everything. It's, that's the thing I love, you know, I've been quite open around in this business. I love putting events on, I love putting shows on. Um, and that, the setup out there is unrivaled. You know, we've been lucky enough to do many shows in Saudi Arabia and, you know, that was, I mean, something special. So fair play to him, congrats on that. Uh, the fight itself, look, I think, I think the reality is because People gave Francis and Garner absolutely no chance. That's the you know, 99. People can come out now and go, yeah, I always said he'd. 99.9% .9 of people would have given Francis and Garner no chance, and that's right because he'd never had a professional fight before, and he was going in against the second coming of Muhammad Ali, according to many people, which is the reality. I think people would have scored it because they would have watched. There was many parts in that fight where not a lot happened, but because Ngannou was sort of you know, doing such a good job of dictating a little bit the pace and it made it look like he won every round. So I actually don't think it was a robbery, being honest. That's me being completely honest. I never get devil's advocate, so I, from you especially. Yeah. I don't think, yeah, I don't think it was a robbery. I think either of them could have won, is the truth. I think Ngannou did more things in the fight that made you think Ngannou should have won. But that was very much led as well by the mentality of he has absolutely no chance in here. So, look, you know, I actually think it was good for the sport as well because 
so many times you put these fights on, they're a whitewash and the fights are terrible, that you have this new audience or a huge audience come in and then they watch a load of rubbish and then they go, I'm never watching boxing again because that was a load of shit. Whereas now you watched it and you actually saw something half competitive. You know, so people will tune in and go, actually that was quite fun. So I don't think it was bad for boxing. Um, I think it was amazing what Francis Ngannou's done. He's going to, you know, he's going to be in some big fights, some massive fights. And uh, Tyson Fury, everyone has off nights as well. He wasn't at his best, but that's the, that's high level sport. You know, not every night someone's going to get in the ring and be tremendous. Not every day a footballer is going to go out and be the best in the world. That's just the way it is. Um, but I think it shows how wide open the heavyweight division can be as well. And, you know, people who counted out AJ, like if that was AJ went in there and did that against Francis and Garner and that had that kind of performance and the result was questionable, AJ would be written off completely, is the reality. That's the truth. And Tyson Fury seems to have a different, people have a different mentality about it. But I think what's exciting is, as, as I say, there's huge heavyweight fights to be made now. AJ does a job on Francis Ngannou and I believe as I've said before he stops Tyson Fury so but it's exciting and that's what we want. Are you in contact with the Saudis uh, with regard to making Anthony Joshua versus Francis Ngannou? Eddie Holmes said that he would like to make that on Saturday I'm sure you saw the interviews of Eddie on Saturday. Yeah look I think I think there's been a lot of talk about people saying frozen out I think the reality is Saudi Arabia want huge events, to, regardless of who delivers or who's involved. It's not about ego, it's not about personalities. They want massive events. And Anthony Joshua against Francis Ngannou is probably one of the biggest fights in boxing, or whatever you want to call it, whatever people want to say it is, is one of the biggest fights and events out there. Um, and you know, I'm, I think that's something we could possibly see. Um, and there's going to be a lot of interest in it. I believe you're in talks to have Anthony Joshua fighting on December the 23rd, Eddie revealed to me. About an hour or so ago, what sort of opponent are you looking at? What sort of venue? Would it be the O2 on the, on the 23rd? Look, a lot of things have got to play out because we're seven weeks away. Obviously, there was a real delay because a lot of talk around Fury, Usyk going on that day. You know, Before the fight, Fury was saying it's that day. You know, And if he doesn't fight me, he's getting sued now. They're saying, no, it's not that day. So, what do you make of all that? It's, it's just... It's the standard thing from Fury, isn't it? It's like shout the loudest and then when it go, doesn't go his way, um, you have to accept people and, and uh, people sort of questioning you when you've said that and then it comes to after like, oh no, actually I'm gonna go away and come back to it. But is what it is, it's the, you, you have to, <laughs> you can't just say things and then not expect anything back, is the reality. Um, but I think, that has delayed that whole process, so it's not set. There's work going on. Oh, knocking the camera around. There's work going on, um, so let's see over the next couple of days. But if we're going to do it, it has to be announced by the start of next week. Fury Usyk now being provisionally targeted for February 2023. From what you saw on Saturday, does your opinion uh, regarding that fight change? Who goes in as the favourite? And do you think we see that in February? Obviously, they're going to want that to be part of Riyadh's season. We know that the contracts are signed, like you just said. Um, I think, yeah, look, I, from what I know, Riyadh season goes on until the end of March, I think, I believe. So I think that was always the time period they had to put on that fight for the undisputed belts. Um, I think, as I said, people can have good and bad nights. And the best X v the worst Y can beat the best. You know, I think Usyk's a tremendous fighter and I always said the same thing, like what he's done from cruiserweight, heavyweights, etc. I think they can all beat each other, is the reality like, of heavyweight boxing. They can all be hurt, all of them. And that's what makes it fun. That's what makes it engaging and people want to watch it. So, you know, I think many people from a, many people's mentality will change now and Usyk will be viewed as the favourite now going into that fight. He has to be because he's, got, he's just, Fury's gone in and struggled against someone who's never had a professional fight before. And you're going in against Usyk, who is arguably one of the best fighters we've seen in the last X year, whatever years. Um, so, yeah, but I, but I do, I'm not going to sit here and say, just because we're a team, like, they can all beat each other, is the truth, and that's what makes it so fun. Deontay Wilder, two on him, regarding Anthony Joshua, are you still trying to make that fight? Look, so that round robin of fights is, is what we're interested in. There's been a lot of talk, AJ's obviously been interested in becoming world champion again, 
becoming a three-time world champion. Um, I definitely think all of these fights happen, be it Fury Joshua, be it Wilder Joshua, like Ngannou Joshua, I definitely think they all happen. I think Saturday night opened up the division more and more and gave more and more options for people to look at, so let's see. The other one on Deontay Wilder, uh, potentially training in MMA for a, a mixed rules bout. What do you make of that? Yeah, I saw that about with Francis Ngannou. I don't know enough about... It's just like saying Francis Ngannou stood no chance in boxing. I don't know enough about how hard it is to go in MMA. The one thing I will say is MMA is brutal. Like, when you think Francis Ngannou takes, like, shins to the head, like... That shows you how... A little elbow in that fight, by the way. I know, he took it. Well, he just rolled the, with the elbow, bang, like he did well. But shows it. that's how tough they are. And I'm not saying boxers aren't tough, but obviously boxers are very tough. But MMA's but just brutal. MMA's oh, yeah. Mad. Savageness. And I think the thing always is with MMA is the time. You know, you do what they do, five five-minute rounds in championship fights. Obviously, that's completely different to the 10 or 12 three-minute rounds you do. So that is something that would always... I thought Ngannou would do... would tire you know as that fight went on he didn't seem to really tire so I don't know I, I, I'm not sure I've never seen Wilder um, grapple or kick someone in the head but I'm sure probably hasn't got the legs for kicking he's got a big punch there but let's see um, Ben Shalom last one on the heavyweights he said that uh, Martin Bacoli beats both Fury and Ngannou off the back of this weekend obviously Bacoli with a, a tremendous win what do you make of those comments uh, he could do but the reality is no one's interested in seeing those fights. Like, Martin Bacoli doesn't have the commercial value that these other guys have. You know, Francis Ngannou is a huge crossover star, he's done it in UFC, etc. Tyson Fury, obviously a huge star, pay-per-view. Like, Martin Bacoli, no one, the truth is no one's gonna give Martin Bacoli that shot. I don't believe. Because why would you fight Martin Bacoli? That's not taking anything, like, tremendous fighter, but, yeah, not the commercial value that these other fights can generate. Chris Eubank Jr. versus Conor Ben. It is the first time we've seen Chris come out vocally in a, in a hot minute and say that that is the next fight. Uh, we believe that you are in final negotiations for that fight, working around the clock. When you said to me earlier, you're working here, but also working behind the scenes as well. I'm sure that's one of them. I believe you're looking at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium and the Millennium slash Principality slash whatever that stadium in Cardiff is now called. Um, when realistically do we see this, January or February? Look, the target right now is January. Um, the key for us as we speak though is making, is getting everything together. And I believe you can't hide away on any side as to this being the biggest opportunity out there, the biggest fight out there and the fight they both need to take next. And it's just getting those last bit, few details. Fights of this magnitude, they take time. Um, I'd love if it was done by now. But they take time and I'm, but I'm very confident we get it done. Am I right in saying that you're going to go ahead and make this fight regardless of whatever's going on? I mean, we, we, we understand that this ruling that Connor's got with the British board may not have an outcome until February, March time, so you're going to make it. And then what happens if the board want to sanction it? They sanction it. What do you do if they don't? Then we have to look at another route. You know, we, of course, we want to, you know, want to work with the British Boxing Board of Control, but we can't stand in the way of Connor Ben taking this fight. You know, and, and like I say, of course, we'd love for the British Boxing Board of Control to sanction this fight. But at the same time, in, in terms of Conor Ben and his personal position, you can't stand in the way when he's got no, you know, he's in, he's in no means suspended. They lifted his suspension. And, you know, again, we've been through these discussions back, forth, etc., time and time again. Uh, I'm very confident that everything gets done and the British Boxing Board of Control sanctioned the fight. Chris Eubank Sr. is back in the limelight doing interviews. He announced that he's been working, he will be working and advising Harlem Eubank. Um, they both did an interview with us at Boxing Social. Uh, Chris actually calling for Harlem to get the Conor Ben fight. Were you shocked uh, by those sort of comments? No, not really. Um, not really, I think. No, look, Chris Eubank Sr. is amazing at what he does in building and telling story you know that's that's why he is where why what he created what he created was because he's amazing at that side of things he's a brilliant talker um so no i'm not surprised he's come out and said it at all uh, i don't think it happens but you know it's uh it's all interesting all these discussions before you said it was a, a family affair and you sort of worked behind closed doors to get it done Connor ben posted a very funny video in which your head was photoshopped as part of team ben 
does that confirm that you are part of Team Ben for that one, or we're sitting on the fence? Still? Uh, look, it's uh, for me. <laughs> Throwing you in it. For me, I just want to make the fight. It's the biggest fight out there. When when the when the two guys get in the ring, I'm I'm no involvement in it. So I want to make the biggest fight possible for my the client we represent in Connor Ben, and also from a family perspective, it would be great to see Chris Eubank Jr. in the biggest fight possible. And there is no there's no agendas and nothing. It's about making the biggest fight for both of them. And when they get in the ring, they're going to go and have a tear up, and that doesn't involve me. I'll just sit there like this, hands closed, making no facial expressions, and I'll just clap them both and uh, we'll get on with it. And the best man will win on the night. Lastly from me, Liam Smith is a free agent. When I spoke to him in Liverpool two weeks ago, he said that the next couple of weeks slash month we're going to be exploring his options. He wants to carry on fighting. He maintained that he has a great relationship with yourself, Matcher and Boxing. Um, anything explored there? Yeah, I'm discussing with the guys now. You know, I'm discussing with the guys. I love Liam Smith. We've had a great relationship over the years. I think just like any fights, you see the best. Work, you know, like some nights, not your night. And I still think he's got a lot to offer the sport. He's still a big name. Um, and, you know, it would be great to work with him. So let's see. Frank Smith, 21 minutes banked here. Always good talking, sir. Final message to the people. Been a minute since we've spoke. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. It's quite nice staying, being, being out of uh, you know, saying anything that gets me in any trouble. You've but been very polite today. I'm in a good mood. I'm in a good mood. I just, uh, I'm very, I'm a polite person. Sometimes I say things, people take my, my sense of humour, which is quite dry, as me uh, starting on people, but it's actually just me being a bit of a laugh. Um, maybe I'm not that funny, who knows? But I like being polite, and it's. Uh, what are you doing? Are you filming me? You're filming you, filming me. Um, I like being polite and just want to make big things happen and enjoy 2024. Safe for the big man, Monte Carlo, we are coming. Safe for the big man, Monte Carlo, we are coming. Is that no, what you want to say? Safe, big man. Oh, I Monte Carlo, we're coming. Or the big man. No, who's the big man? Safe, Monte Carlo, we are coming. <laughs> <laughs>